Are we good to go? Yeah. All right. Yeah, three, to go. two, one. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to another grooming podcast. I'm Nathan. I'm Kathleen. I'm Juan. I'm Kat. And we don't have last names anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> and today is the first day we have Ronnie mic'd up. Hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> I am the button master, Kat. Do not touch the buttons. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so today okay. we're talking about dog shows. Uh, we also want to do some funny stuff. And at the end of the episode, we're going to do more of those get deep questions, right? But I think yeah. we're going to start off with... Uh, the quick questions, right? Some rapid fire. Ooh. Oh. Rapid fire questions. <laughs> and if you think of anything after today, send us rap- more rapid fire questions. Yeah. 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 All right. First question. What is your favorite dog to groom? Oh, crap. It's rapid fire. Answer. Uh, Carrie Blue Terrier. The Sean Frise. A Scotty. Poodles. <laughs> that was Poodles. predictable. Hey, look, we have the ball in our cups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they that was oddly that's predictable. Funny. That's funny. <laughs> Least favorite dog. Least favorite dog. Least favorite dog to groom. A chow. Sorry. Like I'm chows. sorry, Lynn, if you're watching this, we love you and your chows are different. Yeah, chows. I'm, I groom them, but I'm on edge most of the time. Cocker but, spaniels. Oh, yeah, that's a good Only one. Only Americans or... The Only American. Bag. Well, no, because they take forever to dry. Forever to dry. They do take a just long so time thick. to dry. I find, and I do find that they, I feel like they get mad hey, at Hey, wait, wait, like wait. The, the cat can't yeah. make it out of this scot-free. You got to pick something. Pick something. Old English sheepdogs. Oh, that makes sense. I'd rather do an old English than a, a, a doodle that's equal size, though. That's true. But their hair just, it takes forever and it sucks to brush. But they were satisfying as hell afterward. After yeah. they're all yeah. beautiful. And, that's yeah. true. And I will say I do find chows satisfying. It's just I'm always I've had several pretty bad chow experiences that make it hard for me to trust them a lot. So yeah, they I've just been bit by them a they make times. me so weary that I'd rather have somebody that isn't because uh, I feel like then they can tell I'm nervous. Yeah, and that's like one of the only breeds I have that problem with. Yeah, I I like to groom chows and I groom. The one I grew him on a regular, I really like her. She's like mm. one of the sweetest dogs. Yeah, she really is, though. And she, but I think weird. it's good to have a relationship she's with her. She's had a vagoplasty. Yeah, she did. I know. Yeah. That- it was inverted. Her, her vulva was so inverted, she got constant infections. Mm. And so they had to reconstruct it. <laughs> she's a virgin again. Yeah. 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 I don't no, yeah. lost but it, I, mean, sure. <laughs> I, I do want to clarify and say there are a lot of really good chows out there it's just they i've had so many bad experiences that they make me nervous and because they make me nervous the dog can tell i'm nervous and so i think people that are familiar with chows and actually work with them would probably all be on the same page they just got to be wary with them you do yeah and so respect I'd rather... them and and, and yeah. I'd rather give them to Kat and Nathan because I feel like they don't give off the same vibe I do, and so they behave better. For I them. do a really bad chow too. I do a Kat really does good, a really one. bad chow really that bad. I would never do. She literally has to keep this dog muzzled, and he's growling and like snarling and making noise the whole time she's working on him. And everybody in the room is uncomfortable. He's not that bad. No, he is. Is I he like not him. that bad, Nathan? We're she all is. I don't know what she's talking about. He, but he's like, a really good dog when you're not trying. We, we have a chow brushing. that we've been grooming since he was a puppy, <laughs> and he's good for the most part, but his nails, it sounds like he's going to rip your face off. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, this dog for sure would rip me to shreds if yeah. he wasn't. If he wasn't but I can, like, demat his, like, chest and stuff, and he doesn't care. It's just when I touch his feet for yeah. for whatever reason. Yeah, hates his feet. Yeah. Or mm. brushing. Mm. Or the dryer. But I've also had chows that, like, I worked with when they were puppies, like, totally fine super sweet the whole time like came in regularly and then once they hit sexual maturity just flipped on me and like tried to eat me like picking them up and i was like i tried several times because i was like i've worked with you for a year or not year i've worked with you throughout the year like many times it's happened twice it's happened to me twice so i was like i can't keep doing this so i just give them to them and it's really hard to say that type of stuff because you don't want to be breedist right but no i don't and i i agree i i hate being but also you shouldn't be putting if you're not comfortable you should not be putting your career on the line to make a customer happy well and so that's for me a chat like if somebody calls with a chow i generally try and book it with one of them just because i know they feel more comfortable and I'm I don't want to put myself at risk because I'm uncomfortable and the dog can tell. Yeah. So sure. but also talk to your clients. Like 
um, the dog I do, the bad one, he does get sedated. Mm-hmm. So he he has his moments where he's better, but he does relax. Um, and also make them aware that it's not going to be perfect. Mm-hmm. Right. And charge your worth. I charge him $300 for a feather trim. Ooh, we need Has to raise it also prices. let him know if the dog is being difficult? Because you don't want to suddenly be one day, oh, I can't do him no more without mm-hmm. any like build up to that, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and you have a few because there's one... There's one chow, you have a couple that are sedated because there's one that doesn't come in that often, right? That we, after a while, we're like, you have to sedate your dog. We can't do it without. Fire. Oh, I'm sorry. This rapid, rapid fire. fire. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next question. Yes, it went I do rails. a lot of naughty dogs, but, you know, I, I'm okay with it. I feel like I can handle it. Let's see. Uh, what is your guys' go-to haircut when a customer does not know what they want? Um, a number two. If if they don't know what they want, I think like a half an inch or three quarters. Yeah. Mine, mine's a zero. A zero, a five a eighths, outcome. yellow, whatever you call it. I like a five eighths, yeah. It's like, but if they say short, not too short, then it's two. Yeah, me yeah. too. Well, it's funny because I said a half an inch and a three quarters, but a five eighths is right, right in, in the between. middle. <laughs> yeah. My short but not shaved is a, is a number two. Yeah. I agree. My short but not I shaved do, is a do, two. It also depends on three eighths. Of Blue. Three eighths. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of dog it is? Because yeah. I like to leave fuller legs on dogs. I know everybody Same. don't, but I really like the columny look. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. well, and also depends on how old the dog is. Because yeah. if it's old with really thin skin, I might leave a or yeah. a really thin coat. You know, I'll leave it longer. I hate it though when you put these cute ass cylinder legs or these flared ass legs, and they look so cute. And the next time they come in, they're like, "Oh, just shave the legs too." Yeah, yeah. I hate that. Oh, uh, well, except like, for don't you want your dog dies. to look cute? Yeah. Okay, but if it's a Yorkie, shorter. Yes. If oh, it's a short, Yorkie, a Yorkie, I'll do like a seven because they yeah, never yeah. cut smooth. Yeah. You know, I like flared legs. A Yorkie and a seven, and I don't touch the legs except mm. for bevel the feet. That's yes. it. I like yeah. drop legs, bevel feet. I do a zero reverse on a Yorkie. Mm. Nice. We don't do a lot of reverses. Oh, I love yeah. reverses. It's so like controversial, you know? Right. It is controversial. It is. Yeah. Next question. Right, next question. Let's get a little sentimental on the last one. Who inspires you? Aww. 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 My friends inspire me. Yeah. Well, I will. I think it depends on what we're talking about because you guys inspire me to be uh, Juan and Ronnie inspire me to be cleaner and more organized <laughs> and a better and a better business owner. I'm always. I want to be more like them. But um, I mean, Danica is somebody who inspires me. My breeder. I mean, like the things that she's accomplished and that she's trying to accomplish. Like I hope to be half as good as her someday. She's yeah. very inspiring to me. And she's. I mean, she's doing everything. She's like you know. She's got a doctorate. Oh my gosh, Doctor so, Danica. Yeah, Doctor yeah. Danica. That's what really? we call it. Danica. If you're watching this, we often oh. refer to you as Doctor Danica. Danica. <laughs> um, but she's very inspiring. So um, it depends on the what it's for. Like grooming, inspiring. Um, Nathan does inspire me, but uh, Lindsay with her uh, Bashan cut, mm-hmm. very inspiring. Um, my mother inspires me a lot Aww. to be nice. a better mother. She's a good mom. She's, she's a very good mom. mom. How about you? I said you guys. Oh, my okay. <laughs> oh, and then like it? my mentors, you know, um, Danica. Um, there's so many of them. Honestly, Nancy. Nancy, Pina. Um, you know, the, the list goes on and on. Oh, know? yeah. There's so m- there's too many good groomers in our industry. But that's why I just like I kept it. Kept I think it I think grooming wise for me um, and Martin. Pina Pinkusevich, Lindsay Dickens. Wow, she's gonna, he's getting up there with the last name. Um, oh, yeah. Well, we didn't have last names, so I'm giving them last <laughs> names. Um, so I think their grooming and their grooming styles is just amazing, oh, yeah. and I just can just watch them groom forever. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's so fucking nice. It's so just, satisfying. Yeah, to yeah watch it's so scissoring. soothing. You know, it's kind of disappointing, though, because I'm like, I'll never be there. <laughs> That's we what have I to think believe. Too. We have yeah. to believe. Yes, you will. Maybe. Because they got their skill, not just it wasn't just innate. They worked on it. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's and true. then for life, I I want to say you guys, the three of you guys, Aww. um, Aww. like I'm, although I'm very outgoing and very funny, um, <laughs> I tend to stick to like be by myself and stick to myself. And I feel like you guys are so out there that I feel like it takes friends like you to pull me out of my shell and do something like this. Like for example, yeah. I would never thought I would be on camera on a podcast ever. Ever, yeah. ever, and here and, we are, and, here we are. <laughs> and it's because of these three fools 
Um, so I, I love you guys very much. Okay, it's mostly these two fools. Yeah, the same. yeah, these two I'm fools. Also, it's mostly this one fool. <laughs> I would he prefer started, living under a rock. He started all of it, honestly. I no, mean, I didn't. I didn't. It was Juan that brought up the podcast first, and I just well, no, pushed it. Podcast, I was just yeah. like, hey. See, that's the thing. I'm, I was I'm like, good. hey, I'm going to say that, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm interested. You know girls. what I mean? Yeah, I, I think I come up with ideas, and then I think. I need someone else to like start the execution and I'm like, okay, we're doing this. Okay, let's do it. Now we're yeah. all in. Yeah. Well, you were the one that was like, I got the YouTube, I got the website, yeah. I got the email. I got they don't give away our secrets. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> well, no, I mean, you have to He's do got all that it stuff, all. but he did it Follow all. Follow us on all those. Yeah, but, all those things. I worked hard to get them, okay? Yeah. Well, it is, I think it's uh, funny that you mentioned that because it's a comment I, we get all the time where people go like, oh, I really want to like start doing social media, but I'm just too nervous and I hate being in front of the camera, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And then I, Nathan always goes like, I hated it in the beginning. If you go back and watch his first videos, he's like super awkward. I wasn't in like anything because I was like, don't put me on film. Mm -hmm. Please don't show my face. And then slowly we got more and more comfortable. And then now here we are. Look at yeah. us. Yeah. You, you just have to, to do it. You just you have want to do it. To be on social media as a groomer, just do it. Like it's Nike. It's scary. Yeah, just do it. But m I would say most people have been very nice about it. So yeah. don't worry about it. Just do it. Just do it. Make your dreams come true. Yeah. Anyway. Was that it? Was that all of them? Yep. That was pretty good. Yeah. Wait, where's the cricket noise? That's what you should play the cricket noise every time it like we get awkward. Oh yeah. I gotta get better at the buttons. Yeah, uh, else cats can be pushing buttons. Yeah, Kat's just going to start. She'll probably remember where all of them are. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, so today we're talking about dog shows, Ooh. right? One of my favorite subjects. <gasps> no, oh, my God. It's not working. What did you do, Kat? You broke no, it. No, he broke it. Hey. Oh, I didn't know that did it. He just didn't want you to touch it anymore. We've touched on dog shows a lot, but now today we're just going to talk about everything dog shows, right? Yeah, absolutely. I know Kat's been eagerly awaiting this. I have, too. But Kat is particularly excited to, to talk about dog shows. Well, it's kind of your fault that I've become re-addicted to dog <laughs> shows. So I did do dog showing as a junior, mm -hmm. and but I had a dog who hated traveling and would get car sick, and she was a Maltese and a drop coat. Mm -hmm. And I was 12, you know, and mm -hmm. I didn't know a lot, and my mom was trying her best. Um, but Katie got her first show dog and then started continuing, and I was like, I need a show dog. You yeah. Know? Well, yeah. once you started to come and support me showing, then it was like, oh. And now I'm addicted. I love being in the ring. And, and not just that. You're doing fantastic at it, too. Mm -hmm. I think you just Try got a best. Uh, best in show owner handler at uh, Perina, right? No. Um, uh, so it was the, the pre-show before um, AKC National Championship. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, the day before. Oh, that's it. That's it. Oh, my God. <laughs> no big deal. Well, it's every, a freaking huge every, ribbon. Yeah. Reed was huge ribbon on the wall. Yeah, thankfully she brought it to I was our like salon. It's in, the shop. <laughs> yes. it's in our lobby looking beautiful. Um, but so I think a lot of people are probably curious um, what's the point, right? Because um, before I got into dog showing myself, I was unaware of what the point was right like I just thought it was like oh let's go put pretty dogs in the ring and I had no clue like why they did it or what they were looking for or anything like that um and so the first thing I always tell people is dog showing is primarily to judge breeding stock right so the judges should know the breed standard for the dog that they are judging and so they're looking at the dogs in front of them and judging who Motorcycle. Motorcycle. All righty. <laughs> anyway, there that was a really odd noise. Uh, they're judging um, which dog meets the breed standard the best. And so then as you're showing and getting points and then getting your championship, you're proving that your dog fits the breed standard well enough to be bred. Yeah. And so you're like, if your dog, my dog's a Finnish champion, that's saying my dog is of quality for breeding stock. Right. And so... Um, while we will talk about like breeders and like things you're looking for, um, that's why it is important to show your dogs because I mean, you can read the breed standard and interpret it however you want and go like, I think my dog fits the breed standard, so I'm going to breed it. But how can you really know without the eyes of professionals and other people in the sport? Yeah. And the benefits of it are, you know, I don't know. I lost my train of thought. Well, the benefits are vast, right? For yeah. one, you get to learn a lot about whatever dog it is you're showing. 
Um, you get to know it improves your grooming. It improves uh, for me and Katie. It improved our just our lives in general because now we have something fun to do out in the sun and make new friends doing. You know. Well, I think yeah. I mean, I've met a lot of people doing dog shows that I would have never known before. I feel like it's opened more doors for us than even competing has, yeah. um, meeting breeders, finding, and I mean, like I've learned so much because I've learned more about structure. I've learned more about haircuts, but something that I never thought about before is like in competition, I'll get critiques on my groom, which is great. And I do learn a lot from that, but learning how it, the dog in motion, the haircut affects their motion was like a big deal. And that was yeah. something, um, at one of my competitions, a grooming competitions, I had mentioned to Victor actually, like, oh, this is my show dog. And um, when we were on the Sally break and he was watching me move my dog, so then later when he did give me a critique, he was like, oh, I would take this area more off of this area because when she's in motion, it's flipping her hair up and it's making her look like she's throwing her leg out, but she's not. It's just, you know what I mean? And so for me, that was like, aha, click, you know? And like, yeah. it really was helpful. and not everybody will give you a critique like that. Um, so we did appreciate that he took the time, but he is also an AKC judge. Yeah, that's one of the nice things about Victor. He's, he's he is an AKC, an AKC judge. judge as well. So uh, he knew that to tell me, but I found that really beneficial. But those are things that generally you can find out easier at an AKC show if you're talking to somebody who knows what they're talking about. Yeah, I don't, I don't have much experience with dog shows, um, but the very... Well, not the very first, but one of the first few shows we went to, Kat and I went to Wisconsin to go assist Lindsay Dickin. Oh, my God. And I remember when we were, I think we were assigned, we volunteered to go help her, right? Yes, and we, me and Kat were like, oh, my God, we're going to go help Lindsay Dickin. We're going to be Sean's <laughs> special bitches. Oh, my God. And we were so happy about it. And we went, and it was, it opened, like, my eyes to something, like, so new and so exciting. But one of the things that I noticed was she would walk the dog up and down mm -hmm. and then, like you said, see it in motion and then be like, oh, I need to trim this a little bit and then would walk it up and down again mm -hmm. and then trim a little bit, you know? So I never even thought of movement yeah. as as anything that has to do with the haircut, but it does. Well, yeah, because if you leave enough hair, it makes them look like they're throwing elbows or that they're cow hocked, which means that, you know, their back of their legs are touching each other, but most of the time it's just hair. So but you have to watch... Or you can fix things or make it look like there yeah. aren't things there. There's lots of different things. But, yeah, I mean, we do that with Scotties, too. We'll, you know, pull our top line and then take them out and watch them move to make sure that there's no dips in the top line. I mean, there's, like, lots of different things. Similar elbows. We look at our elbows. Um, so th there's a lot of things to learn at dog mm -hmm. shows. Yeah. I mean, I think if you're just a dog person, just going to the dog show is, uh, is eye opening. It's like a whole nether world. If you've never been, it's just a whole nether world of things to do, dog sports, mm -hmm. just like it, it's so vast. Well, I think too, one of the fun things is getting to see really nice dogs, right? So like mm -hmm. just going, like the first couple dog shows I went to, I was like, oh my God, is this the size a Husky is supposed <laughs> to be? Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought, I, I was like, Airedales are so small because yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm used to huge Airedales. Yeah. Pomeranians. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, like Maltese. the small Pomeranians. The chihuahuas, small chihuahuas. The chihuahuas are actually chihuahuas. Oh my God, size. they're so cute too. And so it's just nice to like go and see these like well-bred dogs who are like well taken care of and well loved and they're health tested and they, they have all of the things that you're like looking for but it's just nice to see them how they're supposed to look in their haircut that you never get to see them in too like yeah. you don't I mean some of us here and there get like drop coated Malteses but like 99% of the Maltese we get in the salon are just getting pet cuts or mm -hmm. Tibetan Terriers in full coat or Poolies corded or you know like all of the things that you don't normally get to see every day in your salon, yeah, even if you get purebred dogs, you get to see them at like top form. And if yeah. you're lucky, you get to see Chihuahua spar. If I you're mean, lucky, yeah. That's what? the Never cutest seen. thing ever. Yeah, they spar Chihuahuas. I wish they sparred. What does that mean? Shots. Okay, so sparring is when they make the dogs go face to face and they're supposed to posture, right? It's usually oh. a terrier thing. It's generally only a terrier out. thing. And when two terriers see each other, they generally are like stack themselves up yeah, and they're arch. like, oh, I'm bad. They than arch you. their neck see who, they... and they put them close to each other. They don't fight. Sometimes they might start to fight, but maybe they might snap. The handlers should have control of them, right? They should yeah. be under control. 
But they're basically showing themselves to their like most beautiful, right? Because like terriers are fairly dominant, more. Um, they're showboating, peacock. Yeah, yeah. so nothing. Ba- yeah, you, I mean, nothing yeah, will get way. you. It, if you are at a show and you see two beautiful terriers sparring, it gives you chills. It's like electric. How, like, just the idea of like, oh, they may one of them may flash on the other, or it just that like. Energy yeah. is really, really cool. Although it's funny because like in Scotties, Scotties are a little bit above it all. So they can be a little aloof sometimes, especially the bitches. Uh, like, <laughs> bitches. who are you? Who cares mm-hmm. about you? So then it's funny when like uh, you go to spar like two bitches and then the other bitch turns her butt around like sniff this. <laughs> <laughs> you have nothing to me. Fuck yeah. you. Look at this. But, but when you see them put their head down and they arch their neck super long. Uh, Very beautiful. pretty, yeah. Yeah, I call it flirting with Lumi, and I wish they let the Vachons do that face-to-face thing. He's always his prettiest because he's kind of like sometimes just like meh, meh, meh. So why is it only certain breeds that, that do it or are allowed to do it? or? Well, it's... Because only certain breeds react to each other, for one, right? Like, Well, and in terriers, they want, they that, want that energy. So like... Well, they don't want the dogs to be aggressive, but they want them to have a little bit more like feistiness, a little like bit presence. more. Yeah, well, like in the like, standard for the Scotty, it yeah. says you should, you shall not don't, award a dog that doesn't have the Scotty attitude. Or yeah, doesn't have it, it. it literally says do not place. No dog should be getting awarded for not showing terrier attitude. So, like, it's like important. So, I think that gives them the opportunity to show a little bit of attitude some people don't and some people don't like sparring they think it's like bad but i think that's a closed-minded like um i mean and it specifically states for sparring that you should always be in control of your dog and they should quickly be if they do like for some reason react to each other they should be able to compose themselves quickly and yeah, there shouldn't be out of control no they should never be out of control but a quick little like you know sometimes I see it here and there, and it is electric. You're like, oh, dang. No, what if you go to the carry ring and you see some carries sparring? That is ele- like chills. You oh, know, they're because beautiful. If you know the carries, they can be really hot, right? They can. Mm-hmm. So the judge asks two to come out, and you're watching them walk face to face, and they both are flexing at each other, getting closer, and you just get that like energy. What's going to ha- like, yeah. happen? What's going to happen? But nothing usually happens. Newly, they're just kind of like on the verge of it, yeah. you know? <laughs> it's cool. I like it. It's super cool. It's probably my favorite part. Like I, I'm, I'm with the camera ch- 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 taking tons of pictures because... Yeah. You know, and a lot of people think dog shows are boring, but if you're a dog enthusiast and you love being around dog it's just you get to see so many dogs that you yeah. don't get to see it's you know? really fun yeah like i think me and cat feel the same way where like when we stay at a dog show for like a weekend or whatever like we love getting up early and getting to like the setup and like seeing everybody pulling their dogs out and they're pieing them and it's like this hustle and bustle and we're like you know drinking coffee and prepping dogs and it's usually freezing cold but who yeah. cares it's not my favorite part nathan doesn't love that but, but we love I'm, but I'm in for it yeah though, you know? it's just like the excitement and you know a lot of it is not winning but i enjoy yeah i just l- everything the atmosphere the people around you building friendships just like at a grooming show yeah you know you're just building yeah. up just like a grooming show you also lose 90 percent of the yeah. time yeah it's a lot of losing but i, I just i wish they were fun. air conditioned under a dome oh yeah where yeah. it was like no those. hotter than like 70 degrees that's how it was That'd at palm nice. springs we just went to this show in palm springs and it was okay. really nice it was cold sometimes nathan it yeah. was perfect cold. and it was at a <laughs> polo field Oh, I mean, if you think so it was the fanciest pretty. show ever, and there was literally people on horses playing polo, polo yeah, at cool. the field next to us. Like. There is some really gorgeous dog shows out there, like where you go and you're just like, damn, it, makes you feel it bougie. feels fancy. Mm-hmm. You're like, butter pinky up. You should go to more winter dog shows if you're worried. About <laughs> I, see, I didn't know there were winter dog shows. I thought it There's was only like spring, many. summer, and there, then by yeah. like September, October, it kind of like slows down. There's not as many, but. There are plenty of winter shows. I was just at a show yesterday. There's actually a show going on today, though. So when I get my show, Bichon, you'll, you'll take her to all the super hot shows, and then I'll just come when it's, like, mm-hmm. less good. than 75 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Deal. 3% of the time. <laughs> yeah, 3% of the time. <laughs> um, so uh, I do think that you can find reputable breeders at dog shows. Um, I think something I've noticed over the years is that like some of the most reputable dog breeders don't have any websites Yeah. or like it, they don't advertise themselves at all. They're heavily relying on like word of mouth or like meeting you. 
Um, and so, you know, cause like I get clients all the time that are like, oh, I want this breed, but I can't find anybody in California. And I'm like, I know so many breeders of that, like of that breed, yeah. like, and, um, I think you should, if you're looking for a breeder, you should try to find one in your area. You should try to find one in your area, yeah. That's by design, right? Like, they do it because they, they're very choosy on who they want to have their show dogs, and it's like, oh, they have yeah. to, like, work to find me, or why do you think that they're not as I just don't think it's, I, it's commercial, important I guess. because I feel like their reputation precedes them, right? And so there, finding people. Something I've noticed, though, there are some breeders that think having a website is not a good thing. Like, I don't know, understand don't, yeah. fully what what the deal is with that maybe it's like a from the past like people that had a website were just money hungry or something right but i do feel like nowadays it is important it is a more important thing but some of the people are still stuck on like a website you're automatically a like a bad breeder well have like, you seen how beautiful male. doodle breeder websites are yes. exactly beautiful well websites. that's the competition <laughs> that's the, right that's yeah. the problem though right because yeah. they have these beautiful websites they're super easy to find they're super to get a, easy and to someone get a googles of. where can i find a puppy the first hundred sites are all doodle sites mm -hmm. so it's time to get with it right yeah. and because yeah. that's like yeah. i um i know we've been talking about getting you know for our and we i mean we've only had one litter of scotties but we've been like oh we should get a web page and we will get on it but that's the thing for us is finding the time and that i know that's the same problem um i've met other breeders who are like i just don't have time and then like we don't know how to do it so then we're gonna have to pay somebody to do it and it's expensive it's not cheap um and yeah. so but then those bre the doodle breeders that are selling 12 puppy litters for five thousand dollars a pop have no problem paying for a thing but I'm spending a lot of money to show and champion my dogs and do all of these other things. That's, that's one of the things I wish you can convey to somebody verbally to like a client or someone that's looking for a dog is like the, the amount of work and love that goes into having a purebred dog line and putting those forward is tremendous. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and like you don't breed like a purebred dog and you show your dog in the AKC to make money. Like no, You're not no. getting rich on that. You're <laughs> just not. For sure, I'm but people money. that, but a lot of the people that are breeding doodles, they're breeding them so fast, so they're making tons of money. Well, so, like to me, doing, it takes off yeah. the, it takes away the part, the passion of the love of the breed, mm -hmm. right? Doodle, I think these mass marketed doodle breeders aren't doing it because they just love the doodle; it's because they love money, right? Mm -hmm. Well, and, and they're also not preserving the breed. A lot of these breeds are dying, and that's why we show them, and that's why we're trying to get this breeding stock in order to save this these breeds right? right well and so then i think a question that a lot of people have right is if i get my dog from a show breeder do i have to show it and no. the answer is no because no. most of the time when we have a litter of puppies one maybe two will be of show quality and the rest are pet quality and what we mean by that because i think a lot of people get confused is that when we're evaluating puppies, we're looking for which puppies fit the breed standard the best. And every time we are breeding our dogs, we're also looking for like what dog will complement our dog to help fit the breed standard better. So when that happens, the way genetics work, right, is sometimes you get dogs that do combine the qualities from each dog you were looking for, and then you get something a little bit better. And sometimes you don't. Sometimes you get some of the qualities you didn't like from one dog and some of the qualities you didn't like from the other dog. And, and there's nothing wrong with those dogs. They just don't fit the breed standard as well as one of the other dogs. So you can get a very well-bred, healthy dog from show lines that isn't for showing. And that's how, how come, like, I've, I don't know if people have noticed lately, but I've gotten a lot of wonky mixes lately, like really, really wonky, like both fiddle-fronted, cow hawked just totally mm -hmm. it doesn't take long for somebody that doesn't understand structure to completely handicap their or i don't know if that's the right term to completely like destroy the dog's structure right mm -hmm. like you have one litter and you don't know what you're looking for right like mm -hmm. you just put together oh does this look good and then you have two more of these puppies breed together that had bad qualities and then they come out with even worse qualities. so it takes very only a couple generations to completely come out with something that doesn't look like the breed they intended. Yeah. Right. You know? There's a bunch of like Scotty breeders that don't show and they just like breed Scotties just like they call them like um, or whatever. But their Scotties don't look like Scotties, you know? Because They're they not, just don't yeah. understand the structure or anything, you know, but we call it a uh, typey and not typey. So like dogs that you can glance at and you're like, 
that's a really typey Scotty. And then some Scotties you look and you're kind of like, are you mixed or not mixed? And, and typey means typing. that it like follows the it standard. Like the type. Yeah. yeah, fits the type, fits, fits the breed standard. Yeah, also, even if you get a dog that's not show quality or whatever, mm-hmm. you get a dog from a reputable breeder you're supporting this reputable breed reputable breeder right Mm -hmm. but also these dogs just may have one little thing that makes them not be a good dog they could be great competition dogs yeah also personality because showing is not for every dog personality wise either sometimes you could have like the most beautiful dog and you're like oh my god this confirmation is perfect but they just don't really like the ring maybe they're more nervous or maybe they just don't really like showboating and or you're just travel like, or yeah or they, they don't like nathan travel. would make a great show dog he loves to showboat <laughs> yeah he's the best show dog <laughs> also though like it is easier to get it isn't that hard to get a show quality either because these breeders do want to place their dogs in show homes yeah. oh absolutely right um yeah they don't want all their dogs to be petted. The more like a litter can have show, the more show dogs they can get out of a litter just proves that their lines are better, right? Yes. Or that their lines are good. Right, yeah. Um, so so they want that. So if you go to a breeder and you're like, hey, I want a show dog of this type, right? Of, and they'll usually work with you mm-hmm. and they may not have one at that moment. You may have to wait a little bit, maybe next litter or something. But if your good intentions are good, they'll know that. All right, well, let's get into the, the meat and the potatoes of it all. Let, how does a show work for people that don't know? I mean... Okay, so we have to shine up, sign up for... Shine up. Shine up. Apparently none of us can speak today. We have to sign up for shows in advance. Usually it's two or three weeks in advance, and we will have our dog that has to be AKC registered. Yes. Because we are talking about AKC, American Kennel Club. Yeah, there showing. are a there few are, other... Yeah, there's UKC and C, CKC, but we are talking about AKC. We show AKC, yes. yes. I would say uh, I don't have experience with the others, so I can't necessarily speak to them, but I feel that in America, AKC is the most reputable um, Yeah, they set the bar. Dog they set the bar. Yeah. yeah. So our dog has to be AKC registered, um, so they will have a number. With an open registration. So if yeah. you do buy a dog from somebody and it's a closed registration, you will not be able to participate in confirmation, but you can participate in other dog sports. Yes. But if you are buying a dog as a show dog... It should be open. It yeah. should be open. Um, so you just register for it, and then you will get about a week in advance, you'll get your show time and everything. Um, that's the time you are supposed to be into the ring. Well, and let's say, too, just uh, for anybody who's wondering, there are many websites to sign up mm. for dog shows, but each specific dog show has, like, a certain... Um, like what's the, the superintendent. A superintendent. Um, Is that a good way to find them, too? Well, so you can find them on different places because you can find shows on AKC, right? And it'll tell you who the yes. superintendent is. Uh-huh. Um, or InfoDog is another great resource of... Love it. Uh, Info Dog is my favorite, and you can find different shows. And if they are not the superintendent, then they will they can direct, direct you, you. And you can it's cool because on Info Dog they have like a little map, um, so you could be like, oh, I'm looking for California shows, and it'll like show oh, you California fancy. shows. Or if your dog is already on that site and they are like the superintendent or whatever, um, it'll be like shows closing in one week, and then you can go and look like, oh my gosh, what's closing in one week? Ah. It's usually Wednesdays, just so everybody knows. Wednesdays at noon that they close. And then usually you do the have to be, before. You do have to be careful, though, because all of a sudden your whole life will be dog shows before yes. you know it. So yes. do be careful with that. And <laughs> it does get expensive. There are entry fees. Um, they aren't as big as, you know, grooming competitions. I would say they're anywhere from like 25 to $35 in there, mm-hmm. uh, a show. And that's every day. Usually a show will have, a, they'll call it a cluster. So usually it'll be either a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or sometimes just a Saturday, Sunday, or right. just a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And you don't have to show every day, right? You do not. No. Every day is a different show. It's an individual sign-up, so, and sometimes Mondays, too. So it could be anywhere yeah. from like a two- to five-day event. So it's um, a registration fee for every day? For every, every day. Yeah. Every day. And usually there's a fee to go on top of it. Um, but anyways, once you sign up, a week before you'll get your your time and you're supposed to be there it'll tell you how many dogs are being shown um 
and there's different classes. So before your, your dog becomes a champion, there's um, they're considered class, class dogs, dogs or bitches, yeah. and there's many um, in that one, right? There's so there's uh, six to nine, nine to both twelve, nine to twelve American months. bred, yeah, months. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, I'm sorry. So the six to nine month, nine to 12 month, 12 to 18 month, open. and then Opens anything over 18 months. Well, yeah, but then there are other subcategories that you can also enter should you yeah, be. There's like American bread. American bread. Bread there's by. Bread by. Um, sometimes they'll even split up bread by by under 12 months and over 12 months, depending on how big the show is or if it's a specialty. I think there's novice, right? Or amateur. Or there's amateur. Like, I have a hard time handler. with it still. Yeah, a lot of people get really confused. I generally don't sign up for the subcategories unless um, I have a reason to, um, and that's and we can delve into that at a later date. I feel like, but um, and then um, so in the be best of breed category or best of variety, sometimes if you're showing a poodle or uh, a Datsun or anything, um, there is a category. So it's best of breed or best of variety. And that's if your dog is already a champion of record. Yes. And a champion of record has 16 points. No, 15. Okay, 15 points. And they have to have two majors. Two majors, yes. So and I think so many champion defeats too, right? No, no, no. No, not in champion. So oh, that's for, for the next a class. regular champion, yeah, it's 15 points and two majors. And a major is anything three, four, or five points. You're only eligible to win at max five points for each show um and do the, the points, points vary with how many entries yes okay. so the points vary based off of this the state you're in because different states have different points depending on how many dogs are showing in your region so they adjust it every year depending on how yeah, many dogs so basically if there's like a ton of scotties in your state then it takes more year, scotties to get a major yeah the next year will really suck for you um <laughs> But um, yeah, I was noticing that there was I was looking at um, it's different by breed and different by sex of yeah. so bitches it takes more or something yes. like that. Right. So that's something some to dogs know. only need two, only need three and they're getting because there's so little of them. That, uh, that's some, a good point is that um, for class dogs, they split the dogs and the bitches. So the dogs are only competing against the dogs and the bitches are only competing against the bitches. Um, and this might be confusing. So I apologize to anybody because I find often I'll explain it to people and it makes total sense to me and then they're still a little bit lost and it takes a couple of shows. That's me, that's me for sure. It's, there is a chart. We can, there is we a can chart. We can the share. chart for you. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> I generally find it takes people a couple of shows to like, oh, I get it now. Yeah. But they do, they start with the dogs. Um, and so those are ma male. It depends on how many dogs are signed up and what categories they're in. But they'll start with like the six to nine, the nine to 12. They go through all of them, but they only call in those dogs. So if there's two dogs in six to nine, the two dogs will come in, the judge will evaluate them and he'll pick one and two. Mm -hmm. And then so on and so forth until all of the boy dogs have been shown. And then every dog that got first place in their respective class will come back in for what we call winner's dog. And the judge will look at all the first place dogs and then he will pick one winner's dog. And that is the only dog who gets the points. Nobody else gets mm. points. And then whoever was number two after the dog that won from that group will come back in with the second place dog. Um, and then he'll pick reserve winners. So like if for some reason they find later like that dog was ineligible, like maybe he was in the six to nine group, but he was actually one day over nine months old. Yeah, they're very then they will take that points away and give it to the reserve, and I've that's why they pick the reserves. Yes, yeah. it drama. Happens. It happens. Yeah, drama. Well, because if anybody finds out and you won, they are going to report you because yeah. yeah. they They're want the points. They're going to throw you right under the bus. Um, and so then they do obviously the same thing with bitches, um, and same thing. So whoever gets winner's bitch gets the points, and then those two dogs, winner's dog and winner's bitch, will go back in the ring with the specials. Like class, uh, Cat said, are the dogs who are already championed. Um, and then they will all compete for best of breed, best opposite sex, select dog, select bitch, and then best of winners. And best of winners would have been the best of the dog or the bitch that got winner's dog and winner's bitch. And if one of the, whoever wins best of winners, if they beat the other dog and they had like more points, then they get the more points too. 
Yeah. I don't so know if there's can, a better way they can get a crossover that. meeting. That's just another layer of confusion. <laughs> just slap that right on the top. Dog shows are very confusing, but once you get it, I feel like it's clicked. Yeah. You got it. Right. Um, so it is very confusing, and it's very confusing to talk about and explain to someone, <laughs> too, at the same time. But when you actually go to a dog show, I feel like, and you're watching, it makes more sense. Yeah, it's yes. easier when you're watching it, for and sure. It makes more sense. As and you can watch dog shows on TV. You can. They and televise a lot of them. They have an AQC app, and yep. so there's all sorts of stuff. I think most people's experience with dog shows is watching it on Thanksgiving or Christmas yeah. or something. Yes, yeah. I did that all yeah. growing up. Well, so that's National something I always say is like, I didn't know normal people could show dogs. <laughs> right. I, yeah. I think I mentioned that in an earlier episode. Was only fancy people? Yeah, I thought mm-hmm. like, I don't know. The I just thought it had to be like your job. But then how do you get into that job? I had no idea. So I didn't know just like me as a normal person could just like for fun show my dog. Looking, looking from the outside in, you do think that you do think that everyone's like hoity-toity. Everyone's like so, like oh my breed, oh yeah. I breed this, and it's just like <laughs> it's not that deep, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and when you really get to know the people, they're really not that right. No, yeah. they're really nice. Yeah. Yeah, oh. it's normally just normal, regular, everyday people. Well, it depends on the breed. Yeah. That's yeah. true too. <laughs> That's true too. Yeah. So poodle yeah. people, you know, yeah, poodle people are a long time. Of, <laughs> speaking of that, there are what they are called professional handlers. Yes, and those people are paid to take the dogs in mm-hmm. the ring, so the dogs are owned by someone else, and the professional handler that is their job. They yeah, they uh, usually have the dog living with them, and they're conditioning them, and they're um, training them, mm-hmm. and they're grooming them, and they're that's their job. Yeah. Do you pay them per show and maintenance and mm-hmm. everything? Yes. It's, it, and travel. Generally, yes. it can be but very it differs expensive. Between, it differs between. It sounds uh, expensive as hell. Uh, it, you're it, paying them yeah. for yeah. You're paying them for everything, and there's some that just do ringside handling, which yeah. is basically you do everything for the dog. You groom it. You get it ready. You house it. You feed it, and you just give it to the handler on the side of the ring, and they just take it in the ring. Do you yeah. find that? A lot of handlers take on too many, or do you think handlers do a pretty good job at making sure it's like, oh, I can only handle this many at a certain show, or do you see like handlers? I mean, I've seen them running around like crazy, usually, showing this and this and this and this. They usually have assistants. Yeah, they do usually have assistants, but I will say, like, I have, I think it depends because I I have seen some people where they're like, oh, I just ran out of time, so I didn't show this dog, and like personally, me as an owner, I'd be upset if I signed up my dog and I was expecting it to be shown and then maybe they just didn't have time to prep my dog so then they're just like oh we can't bring it in because it's not prepped I'd be upset but it could be hard though too because like there's so many times and you don't know when your show time is going to be so you could have two dogs that you've had for a long time a couple months or whatever and the next show opens and those two dogs have the same show time right and then what do you do well so, yeah, so that's where the assistants generally come in right so they usually have a team right mm. and there is a main handler but basically if i'm sure a dog get will get a priority mm. and be like okay well my assistant's gonna show it right right well i think it depends too right because if you have like one dog who's like vying for one of the top spots in that breed and then another dog that's like just a class dog they're like the assistant can take the class dog and i'll go in with the the bigger one. And I I think for the most part that they do a really good job. Um, like I said, I, I've known like a couple. But also something that I think we're not quite used to yet is signing up your dogs and not showing them for one reason or another. Because yeah. I see that happen a lot where they're like, oh, I just decided I didn't want to show to this judge. Or I just decided I didn't want to show today. Or... Uh, you know, like different things like that. And I'm like, I paid for it. And yeah. I'm like here. So I'm going to well, show my dog. That's I went to a show yesterday and I had signed up for today, too. But we decided to do the podcast. And I was like, well, I'm, I'm doing this. Right. So yeah. that's different, though. But yeah. I feel like sometimes they're just like, nah, I just don't feel like it today. Yeah. Which or you don't want to get up and prep your dog for can know, three be, hours. <laughs> I will say that can be bad etiquette sometimes. Right. Yes. Because um if you don't have the right amount of dogs, like we were talking about for class dogs, Mm -hmm. sometimes you'll have a major in your breed and you're like so ecstatic and then you Mm -hmm. show up and then not everybody shows up and now the major's broke. broke. And maybe you did, maybe your dog only needed majors and now you've driven however many hours, prepped your dog, and then they didn't deem to tell you, hey, I'm not coming after all, and then now you're just shit out of luck and you spent all the time and money. And that's kind of a bummer when that happens. Yeah. Yeah. 
Do you see how many dogs are registered when you register? Like, does it like no, update? It so comes out. Well, it'll a week tell before. you. Oh, that's right. You said yeah. That. So it'll tell you like how many dogs. Yeah, a week before, but then you don't know who they are. So that's yeah. where then knowing like the people in your area, like, hey, are you going? Do you know who signed up? You know where that can help because then if for some reason you can't make it, you're sick or you just decided you don't want to go, whatever, then you can let people know, hey, I'm not going. That way you're not that way because once you go to the show, then they can see who signed up. And then if you are the asshole that broke the major, then they're going to be like, they didn't tell anybody. So definitely inform somebody so they can spread the news. (laughs) Yeah, you don't want to be the asshole. Well, because then they'll always know. They'll look and be like, ah, it was that person. They broke the major for everyone. Assholes. It's important. Well, and so we discussed the the champion points, right? Mm-hmm. But then, so once your dog becomes a champion and is a champion of record, which means that it is recorded by the AKC because it does take several weeks to get all the numbers updated and everything. Um, and so for them to verify it, right? Mm-hmm. So then your dog, you can go for its grand championship. And that one has levels. I did want to say, I'll, I'll let you explain that, but... Um, I didn't know that that's like a more recent thing. The levels? Uh, And just granding your dog in general. Like I recently was reading an article and um, they used to just like champion their dogs and then like that was it. And there wasn't much of a like, like nowadays you get people that like send their dogs out with handlers for like the whole year or even they owner them, handle yeah, campaigning. Uh, yeah. And they're campaigning their dogs and that new how like new how like they didn't used to do that. How yeah. Cause they it? added the levels. They added like the silver, the bronze. the bronze, the platinum. Like, I don't know how long ago it was, but it wasn't like that long ago. It makes sense though. Because if, I mean, if you're looking for a stud, I mean, and you can choose right between, here, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and you could choose between this, like just a regular champion or a platinum grand champion. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're going to choose that platinum grand champion. But at right? the same time, I feel like that's just a play on money, too. Because right. if you have the money to send your dog off and campaign it for a year with a professional handler traveling all over the country, then you got the money. But me as an owner handler, which mm-hmm. means that I handle my dog all by myself. Mm-hmm. I, you know, he doesn't get anything professional wise. Right. As it's harder for me. Right. Because I'm having to pay my yeah. interest fees and. The well, time off of work, if right. I take time off of work and travel and all mm-hmm. that, right? And I just don't have... It's very expensive. Yeah. It can be very expensive, yeah. I don't have that money that some people can do. So just because I can't get out there and get my dog to as many shows as his dog doesn't right. mean he's not of quality. It just right. means that I can't afford it. <laughs> I do agree with that. I think there's pros and cons to both because I do, I do understand what you're saying, Nathan, where um, I do appreciate seeing, like like the carry you had just shared the other day like she is just gorgeous and if she mm-hmm. wasn't being campaigned we wouldn't have seen her and we would never know how beautiful she is um but i do agree too that it's hard for us normal people who don't have a ton of money to travel or send our dog with somebody we can't campaign as hard and it so it's it's a little bit well, of a struggle danica she can was just campaigning one of her dogs and she but yeah. herself and she had had the number one bitch in the country for Woo-hoo. Scotty last year, yeah. But one of the reasons she was doing it is because she wanted to go to these places and show the local people around there, like, look, this is how the Scotty should be, right? Right. Because in these different regions, sometimes you compete against the same people for years and years yeah. and years, and you never see anybody new. And you think this is what a Scotty should look like, and maybe you're a little wrong, right? Well, so. and it's hard, right? Because while the judges are looking at the dogs and saying like this dog maybe meets the standard a little bit better than this dog when all the dogs in the area looks the same i mean judges can withhold but they don't often withhold as long as it's like within enough of the breed standard so then when you don't have anybody to compare yourself to and you're all kind of breeding the same in the area yeah it's so her campaigning and going all over to people who maybe can't travel as much for the money it was nice because then she can be like, feel this front on my dog. It's really nice. And then they're like, oh, my God, that is a good front. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. that's what it's supposed to feel like. Mm-hmm. I forgot. And, you know, the opportunity to get to touch a lot of dogs, because a lot of it can be hidden by hair, right? Mm-hmm. And after you show, if someone's willing to let you feel their dog or something, that's always nice. After. 
after mm-hmm. after, after so you don't clean. ruin haircuts yeah unless they're going into the group rings right yeah. you know i always ask if i can feel other people's dogs because i'm trying to learn and i'm trying to develop mm-hmm. my hands to know what's out there yeah. well and i do think it's important too uh i mean something that we're trying to learn but then it's not all breeders i think can do this is what are good qualities and bad qualities about your dog because no dog is perfect and no dog fits the breed standard nobody's yeah. perfect yeah yeah nobody, nobody fit no <laughs> dogs fit the breed standard perfectly and uh, this is what we call kennel blind where some people can't pick out the bad attributes of their dogs but i think it's important to know the good things and the bad things so that way you can look and see you can feel other dogs and go oh okay that's better than my dog and that's well, and that's part of the evaluation for breeding stock, right? Because mm-hmm. you're trying to find a balance, right? If you're like, oh, yep. this dog has a nice front, and but this dog has a nice rear. But if we get them together, maybe they would produce a dog maybe. with a maybe. Maybe. When, maybe. When, it's, when, always, <laughs> it's always a gamble. Yeah. When we, genetics, uh, right? When we evaluate dogs in the salon, oftentimes I, I always think like, oh, well, look at, it's easy to see what's wrong with dogs that come in, but it's hard to see like what's right with them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For us, for I feel us, like for yeah. breeders, it might potentially be the opposite. Well, your own dogs. It's your easy someone dogs. else's dogs, but your own <laughs> dogs, yeah. Well, you know, I see, when I look at my dogs, I see their flaws, you know. Yeah. Oh, and that's yeah. just how my mind goes, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, uh, okay, you were you were going to explain grand champions. So grand champions are, so your dog after becomes a champion become goes into the ring with other champions mm-hmm. um and you're trying to beat them for breed obviously you would breed would be what you would want but ideally ideally right but then you can also go for best opposite sex which is so if the dog who got breed which is the best of what was in the ring is male then if you had a bitch you can get best opposite and that would be the best bitch bitch of all the bitches it's kind of like 1.5 yeah you're, you're, you're like one, you're one and be- a half yeah you're the best of your gender basically right um but and not the best of the breed but not the best that's why breed. i say 1.5 yeah and then after that would be um select dog and select bitch so basically like second of but they, their gender they put them in dog bitch order so yeah. just because they pick select bitch second does not mean she's like third i call no. those like Equal They're twos. equal to each equal other. Equal twos. Mm. One, yeah. one and a half, and two, second place. Yeah. And depending on... <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie's... I wish everybody could see Ronnie's confused face right now. <laughs> and then also depending <laughs> on how many entries, like it's mostly it's, it's like at specialties, they can have award of merits, which mm. is... Or, or award of excellence. Ooh. And that basically... Award of excellence. Is... Yeah. Well, that you know, I never heard that before until I went to um, Orlando. Mm-hmm. Did you get one? Yes. Nice. Um, and so no big basic, deal. <laughs> no big deal. Um, basically, they're just like runner ups, right? Yeah. yeah. You don't get any points for that, though. No. Because you, you can get points for breed, best opposite, select dog and select bitch, as long as there was other class dogs or other specials that yeah. you beat. So you're trying to gather points towards your grand championship. And your grand championship is, remind me, is it 25? 25. It's 25. For um, the, f- for the base. I believe it's three majors and three champion defeats. But it goes up still, right? The, so there's the, the grand. Well, the, yeah. Well, so, so the grand, so when they meet, when she's saying champion defeats is you have to beat other dogs that are already champions. So yeah. you have to beat out other dogs. You can't just get points off class dogs. Right. Well, because the thing is, is you, you get points off of class dogs as well. So like, say you're your only champion in your area and then you're just beating puppies left and right <laughs> and you get 25 points. They're like, okay, but those are all like puppies. Can you beat an adult dog? Um, <laughs> you know, or a dog that's already hopefully. a champion. Uh, yeah, hopefully. Um, but so that's why you have to have champion defeats as well. Um, where you actually just beat other dogs that are already champions. And then you also have to get majors, which hand in hand go with each other. Most likely, you know, if you're in a big group and you're beating champions out and you're trying to get majors, then they could be a three point, four point or five point, just mm-hmm. like the puppies. And um, how far does it go up? Well, they can go all the way up to so there's platinum. grand. It's 
25 points. And what's after that? Bronze, bronze is 100. Okay. Bronze is 100. Silver, I think, is 500. Maybe. I, so I don't know beyond bronze. Uh, yeah, I don't I uh, don't actually know those levels. Uh, I have a grand champion. I don't. Uh, she's probably retired, so I don't think we're going to go for grand. But I think so. it goes up to platinum, I right? mean, bronze. It does go up to platinum. It does go up to platinum, yeah. Um, is there I'm anything just beyond sh- platinum? I don't think so. I'm not sure. I'll have to look I at it. I think it's... But I mean that is so many points. Like it's a ridiculous it's a amount. Lot. And so much I think money. It's five. It's so I think it's something <laughs> oh like five thousand or something. Like that. <laughs> so much money. Well, I think. Um, what are the benefits to having a platinum or grand champion or other dog? Like, what I are think the it's benefits of the clout. dog show? Yeah, I think it's mostly clout. I do think. And like, you can sell like sperm or breed them for more money potentially, or no? You, I mean, you can. So I do think there are some breeders that will sell like a top winning male sperm for more money because he's won a lot of shows. But I mean, the thing is, is AKC is I f- the confirmation I feel like is on the decline. And so everybody's trying their best to like improve it. So I'd say for the most part, I don't think people are trying to overcharge for sperm because for good sperm, right? Because if you do have a dog that like really fits the breed standard and maybe your breed is struggling with certain things, right? Like, um, Scotties are struggling with good fronts, right? So, like, if you have a top-winning male that does have a really nice front, maybe you're going to charge, like, a decent, you know, you're going to keep your stuff at a decent price because you want more people to breed to your dog and you need to make it attainable because you are so invested in the Scotty and you want what's best for them. So then if you charge an exorbitant amount and nobody can afford you, then what's the point? Then they're going to go to the straight front Scotties and it's going to continue to decline your breed. So as a good breeder, you should be wanting to improve your goal with each breeding is to improve the breed. Right. And Mm -hmm. that's one of the things that I think is like the most important. So while I do think it would be nice if you could charge more because of the fact that we're trying to make it more uh, accessible and you want to make sure your good dog is getting out there. I don't think we really do. I feel like it's mostly for the clout. So a, go- a gold clout. is 400 points. A platinum is 800 points. Mm. Um, and it can be doubled to be a triple uh, diamond. Mm-hmm. I guess it's all the way up to 10,000 points. Jeez. You yeah. skipped silver. What was silver? Um, I, it doesn't give give all that information. Oh, it didn't? Was, okay. Well, he's not on AKC. Well, but I, you, if you think about it, right, like what you said gold was 500. So, But if you think each show, you can only at maximum get five points. Yeah. So that's a lot. So maximum. like if you showed against a hundred dollars, aren't grand points. champion points different though? No, no, they're still the same. They're still the same. So then if you count 500 divided by five, that's still a hundred shows. And that means there has to be enough dogs that you competed against and won against to get. That's per day though. So you can get five on Thursday, five on Friday, five on yes. Saturday, five on Sunday. Yes. yes. And there are rare. But there, there has are rare... to be enough dogs entered to even get five. There are rare times too when there's two shows on one day. Yes, be a morning sometimes. And evening. It's usually oh. specialties. Um, so sometimes yeah. there'll be like a specialty in the morning and then another show yeah. in the afternoon. Or I also wanted to add when you are getting points both for your class dog or your grand champion, they have to be judged by at least three judges. Oh, that's yeah, a good point. Be the same because judge you the can't whole time. just follow around one judge <laughs> who likes your dog. It You're doesn't like, oh, work like that. This dog likes me. Per- or and this it's judge funny because like perfect. all these rules, like I bet you that rule's in place because somebody just it. followed Absolutely. a judge around and then well, you someone know, else is like, no, 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 no. <laughs> or they're like, that judge is my friend. Um, I would say that showing is quite political. It can be. Well, so, so the. I some, feel like that's all. That's what like deters just, me from. So I do, I go kind of back and forth, right? Because you do have plenty of people. And I I have witnessed this myself where a judge, I feel like is just looking at the faces and they just pick handlers that they recognize that are like bigger names. But I will, something I do want to point out is that I am a novice, right? And so I'm still learning. I have a lot to learn. While these handlers are professionals, they are confident in what they're doing. They don't have to ask questions ever. Um, And their grooming of their dogs is gorgeous. Gorgeous, Their um, conditioning of the dog, their training of the dog is far better than mine is. Um, And so the way that they present their dog to the judge is better than I I can do at this point while I'm working really hard. And I do, I have felt from time to time that maybe my dog was looked over because I'm novice and not a professional handler. I do want to say that I do think sometimes 
it's just because I am novice and my group, you know, maybe I'm not presenting my dog as well as I could be. And there is people out there that say, oh, they only want to pick handlers. And some sometimes they don't want to hear it, but it's just like their dog sucks. (laughs) There is that. There is. There are the breeders out there that just have crappy dogs and they keep losing and they're looking for an excuse. Right. They want like. But I've also seen people show their own dogs and lose and lose and lose. And then hand it off to a handler and then win, win, win. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, but there's truth could, to everything. Right? It could also be that their presentation is better. But I also feel like as if you are an owner handler, mm-hmm. just keep trying. Just keep trying. Yeah. Don't don't get discouraged because there are going to be judges who like you and you could have a really good day or you can have a really bad day. Say I went to Orlando, right? And I had a good weekend. Mm-hmm. And since I've been home, I've gotten squat. And yeah. I've been to three shows. Well, and I think that's too <laughs> similarly, like we said, to competitions where we said, write down your critiques, write down yeah. what your judges like and don't like. Same thing for dog showing. You start to learn what judges you like, what judges you don't like. And I think it pays to pay attention to not only what happened in your ring, yeah. but uh, instead of just making a snap judgment of like, oh, they just didn't like me for this reason. Um, sometimes I'll sit around and watch them judge other rings, and then then maybe at the end I'm like, oh yeah, they just don't like, they just want handlers. Yeah, there uh, are, and there are <laughs> some like most. I think most judges are trying their best to do the best job, but there, I think mean, they're just people, right? Yeah. And there are some that just suck, yeah. right? There are some yeah. like you could f- point out any field or any any job, and there's people that suck doing it, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So or don't take it seriously. Or don't take it seriously. They just want to go in there and point at whoever they think and like well, don't and don't put the time and the re- and, and the energy into learning these breeds. But to become a judge, you have to put in the time and the right. You have to like work your way so up to I that. So I don't know that much about judging, but apparently it's somewhat easier than we thought. That's what I was told recently that it's not as difficult as I thought it was. Um, well, there's also two, like, enough about there's it. breed judges that, like, speciali- specialize in, like, a certain breed, and then there's all breed judges that, mm-hmm. I mean, think about being an all breed judge, right? That's got to be tremendously That's difficult. so many dogs. Mm-hmm. Because I, I barely know the standard of a handful of dogs, but they're supposed to, like, have an understanding and to know the nuances of hundreds of breeds, right? Like, that's... Well, you know, not just that, but... Um, so like there's nobody that's going to get that. A already. fair point out too is that um, generally, like when we're counting how long a show is going to take, um, we guesstimate about two minutes per dog. So you have to think in two minutes they have to feel over your whole dog, watch it do a down and back, and then an around, and see enough of that dog, and then remember what they saw as they're looking through every other dog, and make quick snap judgments and, and that and is and there's that's, like a, a, that's hard there's yeah. usually a point system for the dogs where like different portions of the dogs are Ranked. worth more points in their oh, mind yeah. than like oh this dog has a bad front but its rear is good like which one's more important mm-hmm. right and they have to make these snap judgments on every single dog and then go do it from a completely different dog say like an english bulldog is a face breed right most of their points are in their face right. and then they got to go to like a doberman and know the body like it's well yeah. then yeah and you have to take into account would i then is say if you have three dogs right one with a really good front one with a really good rear and then maybe one with a moderate front and rear and then what a really nice but face. then but then you have to look at the dog as a whole too because the dog is not just parts and pieces it's a whole so you yeah. have to look at it as the and whole thing and then just make a quick and all these breeders have in their mind what they think is wrong with their breed and what they are improving well and what they think is most important like right because so every breed is like lacking in certain areas right like, oh our breed needs to get better this and that breeder is working on that and right yeah and some so, other breeder for the same breed might have oh bad fronts and we're working on fronts so they might yeah, value somebody them. else might be like head planes are more important to mm-hmm. me or this so i definitely it's and same for judges then too right where like a judge I, I've seen judges where movement seems to be the most important thing to them. And so they're more focused on how the dog moves than other things, or maybe the headpiece is the most important to them or, um, same as the breeder. So then, you know, sometimes you're like trying to figure out like what the, what is their thing? Right. And you can sometimes tell, like when you look down the line, like what is their thing? Like, I think with this episode, we properly scared 
everyone away from <laughs> dog, showing dog, you know? But, you know, I, and I don't want people to be discouraged no, because don't. we need more people in the confirmation world. But it is a dying yeah, sport. It's really fun. But, I mean, just because there are all of these things, um, I mean, I, number one, I think it's kind of normal, right? Because it, we've it's said similar things about competition, mm-hmm. similar things about... I think in anything you get into, I mean, I'm sure sports are the same way with, you know, like kids sports and teams. Oh, yeah. And Those dentists we keep talking about. Dentists, <laughs> yeah. Those dentists and their things. Um, but, you know, but I think yeah. that overall it's worth it. You yeah. learn a lot. You make a lot of good friends. Um, and there's Pee Wee. Well, there's all like it's we're very trying family to, friendly. We're trying to raise our children to be dog show people <laughs> like us. So Pee Wee's is just a fun little activity that the club, the club who puts on the show usually does. And it's from kids from five to nine. And my daughter, who's five, loves it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And it. basically, they just get to go trot around the ring and put the dog on the table. They just get to pretend. Yeah, and everyone right? cheers it's very for fun. Everyone. They all get to cheer. It's very much for fun and just like a little bit of practice. Practice. And also, if we want our kids to do juniors, which now Owen is doing, and mm-hmm. he's rocking. Mm-hmm. And... Um, it's something we we're trying to grow our children into loving the sport like we do to try to preserve it and get more yeah. people well, in our it. son's like all in he's all oh in. my gosh well so the peewees is cute they usually give them like cute little ribbon everybody gets a ribbon a participation ribbon. Yeah. so yeah. any of you who hate that i'm so sorry <laughs> uh, i mean they're five Back to nine, to nine. <laughs> yeah. they're, five to nine. <laughs> they're just five it's to okay. nine guys um you know and then sometimes they have like don't cute worry little once they're 10 bags. they can start losing <laughs> yeah they have cute little well, unless they're owen We've touched, Unless you're Owen. we've touched on Owen doing juniors before. So juniors, um, you can sign up for kids that are nine or older. I think it's nine to 18. 18. Um, and so they get like a special juniors number. A lot of shows juniors can show for free, which is really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes they do charge you for it, but it's usually less than your standard fee. And then if you entered the dog in another class, then usually it's free. It's like with right. an entry kind of. Yeah. You know, like a BOGO. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't get one. So you said there it's like participation, but there are there points too? So for, for Pee Wee's, no. Pee-wee's no. Juniors there is. Juniors, yes. And is it for the kid or for the dog? For, for the, the kid. kid. So, Child, sorry. Um, so the juniors is somewhat different than regular, right? Because like you pointed out, the, um, thank you. Um they're judging the kid on their handling and presenting of the dog, and they're not supposed to be judging the dog. Um, and so you can use like retired dogs, spayed, neutered dogs. You can use anything. Anything. You can use a mu- your Sometimes mutt you can use mixed breeds, if but they're registered. Um, they have to have a pals number. But not all show accepts them either, yeah. so you have to check with each individual show. Um, but um, juniors is nice because they have. Three different age groups, so it doesn't have to be like 10-year-olds with 18-year-olds, right? Mm. So Owen's in the junior class right now, I believe it's called juniors, but it's 9 to 12-year-olds, and then I think it's like 12 to 15, and then like 6, 15. 15 to 18, or whatever yeah. it is. Um, and so, um, and then they have two subclasses within those factions. There's um, novice and open and so, like, Owen's in open now because I think it's called open. Yeah, he um, won himself into it's confu- it. Juniors confuses fast. me still because you're all learn- of it's confusing. You're lear- <laughs> we are learning it still. Well, he just started, right? Um, so I'm still and a little bit. We're very proud confused, of him because he's been doing a lot of winning. He's been doing really good. Yeah, really good. This little. <sighs> he shows dogs way better than I do. Well, I mean, so we just went to Palm Springs, right? And um, I, like a very bad mother, forgot to sign him up for juniors because it's still so new. And I'm like, I I forgot. It was my bad. And uh, which sucked because it was a terrier specialty. So that could have been really cool for him. Um, so I feel really bad about it because it was the first yeah, show it, of the it year. End, it ended up you can't even just better. Sign up there? No, you have to sign up ahead. It's I an wish. Advance. It's because an advanced I, thing because it's numbers well, and stuff. You know, though, because I just saw Marcia comment ab- about, like, in Canada, I think it was Marcia, and I thought she said that they can sign up, like, just a couple hours before the show for juniors well, there. And I was like, God damn Canada it. Canada does things better. 
I know freaking Canada. <laughs> well, you, don't wanna, you don't want to like okay. sign up and then not know and then no other kids be there. So you know. I mean, so I it's guess. good to know ahead of time. Like, oh, there actually be kids there. But um, anyway, so I forgot to sign him up, and um, I felt really guilty. And Danica, being as sweet as she is, was like, "Oh, I just signed up my six-month-old puppy boy for the classes. He's never shown before, so like, if there's only one other male dog showing against him. So if you want to show him for the weekend." That's fine. He's such she, a. She ended up, he ended up getting the point on her on her dog every day. Yeah, he won winner's Owen? dog yeah. every day. I bet the lady on was pissed. Six <laughs> months showing against them, you know, it, this little kid just comes in and, and is and is winning every day. She was probably pissed. Yeah, six month old puppy, never been shown before, and Owen's just like, all right. He's such a good kid though, because like twice we got up at like five in the morning to go prep, and we left Nathan and our daughter, he's old, at the hotel room to sleep in. And I was like, are you sure? And he's like, yeah, I'm so excited. And he was so stoked. I can't believe I won all three. He was only entered so cool. three of the yeah. four days, but he got winner's dog every day. Yeah, and and then, then um, on the last day, because it was like an accident that the dog didn't get signed up for the fourth day, and he was so bummed. He was like, oh, my gosh, I didn't. I don't get to show today. Oh, and he had come early in the freezing cold. Like, you know, so I was a little bummed for him. And a friend of ours with a carry, it, the puppy bitch was like, "Oh, you want to bring my puppy in?" And, and we were funny though because she was she was kind of like scared at first yeah, because she, like, Owen sure? started are handling sure? him practicing, uh -huh. and she was immediately like, "Oh, maybe this is a bad idea." But she's looking <laughs> but at she him and she's like, "Well, I already it. committed." Yeah. So they go into the ring. Well, and they had they had big points up for grabs, so she, you know, like. Um, there was a major available. I felt bad, right? Because the yeah. yeah, you can't take it away from the kid now that you offered it to him. <laughs> yes, he, she goes and he goes in the ring and he freaking gets a four point major on this puppy. Yeah, he got yeah. one. Wow. Everyone's cheering for him. All the carry blue people. Oh shit! Where's the? Yeah. I mean, it could have been the clapping. But I, was yeah, I was looking for the clapping. I was looking for clapping. Yeah. Okay. Good job, Owen. So everybody's. You gotta stop. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> cheering for him, and he's just glowing, you know. Well, and Nancy a, Han was yeah. there, and she's cheering for him. The breeder, uh, this dog's breeder, was there. She's cheering, and she was the most nervous I heard. Because <laughs> she's like, "Dang, now this kid's going in with my dog, well, not yeah, the person I sold the dog to." I mean, well, what if you know? What if he hadn't gotten the major? Then you would always wonder, like, was it the handling that did it? But or? He's, I don't know about the professional handler though. That seems like a. It seems like a not a fun. Career. See, Nathan doesn't think it sounds I fun, but it, I think it I sounds so much fun. Handling. You like, get all these different fun dog breeds all the time, and then you get to travel everywhere. And like, I don't know. I think it sounds fun. I'm Agreed. with Nathan. <laughs> yeah, like I just want to get up at three in the morning for the rest of my life. <laughs> you know what? Though? It does, like it's freaking fun, though. Yeah, I like. It. I like it's doing like, it as like a fun like activity, not as from like time I'm, to time. Yeah, yeah. I like never competing. Get up like, early no, with he doesn't. Us. I Unless normally do. But he'll go fishing okay, at so freaking you let two me, in the morning. You let, me uh -huh, sleep in, yeah. you let me sleep in one week, and then all of a sudden it's like, I never get up. What the heck? <laughs> no, okay, but you know, I'll get up and like wash, I'll tub wash like the Scotty and the Cocker and be like drying them on the toilet and like Nathan will mosey on in. Like, <laughs> I, need, I need my shower. I need my eight hours. He'll be like, I need my shower. And I'm like, get out of here. I'm trying to dry this Cocker for the last With hour. With a Dyson hand dryer. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you know, the Dyson dryer is good, though. The Dyson yeah. dryer is great. Not ours. I don't. Ours no? Is, Does no, it keep it like, turning off? It turns off. You got to okay, clean the ours filter. Ours is starting to do that. Yeah. It's you the filter. The filter? Yeah. The, you okay. take the thing off. Your dirty you take, ass filter. Then, no, we do that. Yeah. Do you run it while you're doing it? Try doing that. Because it'll like blow it out. I have to like <laughs> turn the cold <laughs> for a little bit. And then, okay, I do have no, that. Yeah, problem. you got to clean it. You got to clean it. I do have that problem. Well, now I just use a velocity dryer. Yeah. Just blow, yeah. Nice. So uh, I can't use a velocity dryer. Whip my hair in a mat. Yeah, it whips it. Yeah. Well, your hair's short, so I whip my own hair back and forth. <laughs> I whip my hair. I just get out the shower and stand there, and then all of a sudden my hair just starts flying in the wind like a eagle oh, or something, you know? Nice. <laughs> some, some mullet humor. So another thing we've mentioned is the professional handlers and then the owner handlers, but there is a separate point system for the owner handlers. Right, yeah. and, and that's, that's something I. I do my little campaign for, right? Because mm -hmm. yeah. um, I go to most of my shows trying to earn owner handler points because last year I made it into the top 10 mm -hmm. for the owner handler and I was invited to um, Orlando to the... Oops. 
There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I was invited to owner the owner handle championships to the top ten of every breed. And that was That's just That's a big deal, Kat. It's fun. Yeah. It's a very big cool. deal. I loved it. And well, and so just to clarify for everybody, again, similar to juniors, they're they are judging your dog, but they're also judging your you. handling yeah. of the dog. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of hand in hand and it doesn't give the dog any sp- like special points per se like it doesn't help with championship or grand championship or anything like that it's like a totally separate thing yeah handler. so they're it's more for kudos yeah it's more it's more about just you yeah, <laughs> yeah. than the dog and um so if you get breed unless you're at a specialty so if you get regular breed you get five points for owner handler but then if you go to the groups which not all shows offer it so um if you are looking at shows and it says N O H S that stands for the national owner handle series. Mm. Um, so, and that's where you can collect points and then you'll go to group with every dog that is in your group. Yeah. It's like all the same groups. Yeah. So like I do non-sporting, right. Right. And then you go and you can get points for that. Right. Um, And they're not always not. uh, So, I mean, sometimes people don't stay. So then it's not always like a full group. And sometimes there's no owner handles to give out for certain breeds. So sometimes it's nice because you go and there's only like three or four dogs. And then you're like, like, I'm going to get a placement. (laughs) Um, And I've gotten several firsts. And then you get to go in with every first from the group. And then you could potentially win owner handle best in show, Mm -hmm. which is just more points. But she's done like a bunch. Yeah. Oh, I've gotten two owner handler best in shows. Mm-hmm. That's a bunch. That's a bunch. Well, that's a hundred points towards the thing, and so you earn different levels of that as well. Mm-hmm. That's silver, bronze. I'm at. Are silver you a triple right now. A triple grand diamond? Only out of silver right now. <laughs> so I know. Well, see, I'm like screwed because I show at ninety nine percent of the shows I show at are with my mentor, who's a vastly better <laughs> Scotty breeder than I am, and she always owner handles. So I just never get the opportunity. You should so Helios. Built in. That's less of a handler. Oh, well, see, I, handler. I told Owen I'm going to put him on, on as an owner of Helios so he can start getting owner handled points. And then he's going to compete against you. And then he's going to compete. And he's going <laughs> to beat me. Oh, no. I'm going to make that little boy cuteness the, uh, compete yeah, against you. Yeah, they see you. him. They see him. And, like, he's very polite and, like, well-spoken. And I think when, you know. He's got this cute little outfit. The judges are generally older people. And they're like, that's how the kids should be. <laughs> You know, like, don't speak until I speak to yeah. you or something. You know, he just, like, walks around like, oh, I'm a good boy, you know. <laughs> With his big giant dog. He's so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then he's old's about to start juniors, too. Yeah. So we'll see. I know. We took her to she... first class and traumatized her a little bit. I let her handle Lumi, which he is a big mama's boy, and he's kind of a spoiled, rotten He brat. made her cry He in made class. her cry. <laughs> she cried. In the class? Yeah, in the class. In no the middle. Bueno. She gave up in the middle of the class and cried, and mm. uh, I had to he, console he her. just wanted me. He you wouldn't. Know? He wouldn't stand the right way. He kept wanting to turn around and stare at Kat. Because I was behind. And him. like wine and yeah and, and bark. Uh, so my dog's a butt face. It was I a, understand. It he was is a, a mama's boy. Poor choice on my part, but I thought like, oh, he's like already so good and well trained and um, only for me. Yeah, only for Kat. So well, that I was told her I was like, I'm worried that he's not going to behave. And well, she's yeah. just more sensitive in general. No, Owen, Owen would have cracked under that pressure too, because he Owen was just—he was constant, like trying to. Turn no, around I know, him. but I'm just saying in general, like Owen is very outgoing, whereas Isolde is a little bit more shy and reserved. So she's she's like, I'm never going to well, show and again. And it's a big bold One dog. Well, and it's hard to show himself. It's hard too, right? Because then she's coming in afterwards, and Owen is already so confident, and he's got like all these friends. We get to the class, and everybody's like, "It's Owen! Tell us about all your Palm Springs wins!" Blah blah blah, blah. you know. And so he's like, "Yeah, it's me, and I'm in the front because he's got the big standard poodle." And you know, and so then she's like, "I don't <laughs> she know got anybody." The Bajan that just didn't want to do it. Yeah, she poor <laughs> so baby. It was funny. Poor yeah. baby. I was worried Oops. it was going to happen, but you I, know, know. I, I wanted I to give it a shot. And then I thought about leaving, and then I was like, hmm. but I was also there trying with my puppy. I should just gave her the puppy. No, I mean, we tried to, but she said no. She she, at that it. point, she was just too upset. Yeah. She was too upset. All right, so your brains are probably scrambled a little bit, so <laughs> now we're going to do something a little funny. Uh, let me pick one of these deep cards. Let me see. Oh, oh ice icebreaker. Break. Uh-oh. Let's see. Oh. Who is your friend group? Oh, who in your friend group is the funniest? Well, oh. obviously. I don't know. Obviously, it's, it's me. Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, okay, I'm married to Nathan, so I do feel that I have to say him because I feel like I would pay for it later if I did it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know. I do find him really funny. That's why I married him. I think I'm social media funny, but in person, weird. You know? No. But you're weird funny. You're, yeah. you I think we're all funny together. Like, we I bring think, it yeah. out of each other. We, like, we bring it out of each other. We play off of each What a pageant other. answer. We're all funny <laughs> equally. <laughs> we're funny together. World peace. <laughs> um, I think we're all funny in our own retrospects, right? Yeah. There's, we are a different kind of funny. I feel like I'm mostly weird or I just say dumb things. But I think, <laughs> I actually do think Juan's really funny. Yep. Um, I think he's... Uh, He'll say things that just make me laugh a lot. And Drake also said that you were really funny when he was listening the other day. He was like, oh, wow. Thanks, trauma. Yeah. He was like, wow, Juan is really funny. Well, he didn't say I, uh, Nathan was funny, but I think it's because we're with him all the time. Yeah. We're so. with him all the time. Since I grew up in the everything is gay uh, era, you know, um, I can't say that even though like it's Anymore, in my mind. Yeah. I'm like. But every time Juan comes out and goes, that's gay. It's, just, it's so funny. To gay? Me. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah, I just laugh and laugh. Uh, so, yeah, Juan, you're pretty. pretty. Oh, thank yeah. you. I think you're funny, too. Thanks, I brother. I think we're all funny. <laughs> <Not> Thanks, <laughs> bro. <laughs> well, and then I, you know, I I do think that Ronnie's pretty funny, too. Yeah, I, I think he's funny. I think he's got because he's very sassy and he yeah. says whatever. I'm just the asshole. He's he got a gay sass. He, he says what he really thinks. So we, uh, or sometimes we can't tell if he's being serious or not. Yeah. So. Sometimes I can't tell, and I'm married to him. <laughs> that's why. So. That's one of the things I like about Ronnie is that I can't read him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm good at reading he's people, confusing. but I have, I have a hard time <laughs> reading him. I'm like, is he actually mad or is he? Gay mad or is he like? Yeah. Gay I, mad. I have to ask him. I was like, okay, are you mad or like, are you? You're not doing a thing, right? Like, you're not mad, right? Like, I have to do that. Too. Yeah. You're like, okay. Just yeah. Tell me the truth. I don't. Yeah. I don't know if he's mad at me sometimes. I'm never mad at you. I at always all. thought you hated me. For I know. The longest time. That's what Kat always says. I think nobody likes me. Are you well, sure? You don't I still like don't think me? people like me. I think we should do one more. This one is: What is the best birthday gift you've ever received? I have oh. no idea. Katie kills it every time. And I was going to say you have no idea. <laughs> you know what's funny? is So my the best birthday gift I ever got, I didn't actually end up getting. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> it was from you. You don't remember? Okay, so like several, several years ago, Nathan gets, it was, I think it was my 30th birthday. And, um, or no, maybe it was my 29th birthday. And uh, he was like, I got you tickets to go see, wasn't it Yo-Yo Ma? Oh, and yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I love classical music, and yeah. I was like, he was like, I got you tickets, and we're going to fly, because it wasn't, it was like in Southern California, and like, I'm going to, you know, do like a whole weekend with you, and it was so sweet, and I was like, oh my gosh, and like, this is going to be so nice, it's like, I've always wanted to do something like this, blah, 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 blah. And then they canceled the concert, so I didn't even end up getting to go. But it was literally the best gift I've ever gotten. Yeah. Because I did cry. I was like, "Thank oh you, God, thank you." So sweet. <laughs> I'm thank the winner. You for this but then gift it, I never it gave did her, get, actually. It did get canceled, so we didn't get well, to no, go. You know what to get her. Oh, nice. Um, I would say one of the best gifts I ever got wasn't a birthday gift; it was a Christmas gift, and it was the baby moon. Oh, I forgot I had about the that. best yeah. time. The baby what? A baby, baby moon. moon. She took me to a nice hotel. Oh, we had a spa. oh baby moon. Yeah, oh. yeah. A spa day, yeah. and it was just me and her. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was a really good trip. It, I'd love to do it again. Yeah. Although now I feel like we'd have to bring our daughters, but maybe we could do it without them. Maybe we could do one of each. We'll That's yeah. the fastest way to suck the fun right out of it. I know. Well, this was like a nice bougie <laughs> Napa hotel too. Yeah. So we played pool and yeah. bowling. It was so nice. It was. It was All right, what about you? Relaxing. I I agree with Kat. I think I'm gonna switch it to Christmas. Okay. Um, and Ronnie is the best Christmas gift giver ever. Mm. Um, like he, I'm really into musicals, so he got me tickets to see Wicked. Oh, and my it was favorite. like second row, and it was they were so good. Oh, they were such God. good tickets. Wait, when did you go? Uh, it's my favorite like show. I love Wicked. Yeah. Favorite show. Oh, so okay. good. So good. I Wait, love musicals. Wait, no. You said 2015? Or was it Or was it, uh, 2012? It might have been our first Christmas together. You was started it, out strong. It, it, wasn't, wow. it wasn't 2012, right? No, it was not 2012. Because we went in 2012 to go see Wicked. And it would have been really funny if we went to the same one. Yeah. That would have been funny. That would have been weird. Yeah, but like weird, no funny. way. Because they're there f- doing like a show every day for like weeks and weeks. So like, <laughs> Yeah, but you never know. Nathan, don't ruin my dreams. <laughs> and Have you ever done that though? <laughs> what? Like found out later that you guys were like in the same place at the same time and didn't know? Oh yeah. Because we've done that and I think that's cool. Yeah. 
Serendipities. Oh yeah. <gasps> yeah. Oh my God. Jinx. We're in the Matrix. <laughs> that was us at the uh, Danity Kane concert. Oh, oh yeah, wow. we were both at the Danity Kane concert. That is true. That's pretty awesome, guys. Yeah. That's it's a pretty good scissors. gift. Yeah. Okay. Grooming so scissors. He just he just like it's things that I like mention Aww. in passing, and I don't know if he like takes notes or whatever. But I do. He, Every time somebody mentions something like for a sister's birthday or anything, I'm like, oh, and I write it down because like smart. Yeah, smart. I, I write it down to, do to make sure that <laughs> sometimes they, the end. The trick is you can't buy shit your birthday month or Christmas month for yourself. Yeah. See, that's, <laughs> that's really him. hard. Yeah. yeah. So that's like. Uh, that's a good idea. That's what I always think I'm gonna do. <laughs> I do I it don't. sometimes. I'll do it sometimes. Yeah. Okay, but where was that? It just the tickets. The tickets, the scissors. Yeah, just anything. Just Christmas. Anything. Every Christmas. Thank you, babe. Aww. All right. Well, that's it. You didn't you go. go, Jesus. Yeah, I Nathan. don't remember. You've gotten me like lots of stuff, babe. Um, that's messy. He up. also buys himself everything he wants, so he's hard to buy presents for. Katie let me buy a boat. I did let him buy a boat. Yeah, yeah so that might be it. She let My me parents buy a boat. let me buy a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, babe. You're making me look like a fool. No, what is? Uh, you let make me see. Me uh, look like a bad gift giver, but I'm a really good gift giver. She is. Okay, today. What's uh, the best thing you bought him? Yeah. What's what, the best what is thing? you? What do you okay. think the best thing is? Well, so this, <laughs> this is similar because this was like the first year we got together. It's not a Christmas gift or a birthday gift. This was a Valentine's Day gift. And I stole his car from work. Oh, I no. literally oh, yeah. had to, um, somebody stole his keys out of his like work car. desk and they had to sneak them out to me. And then I had to park my car in his car spot. So nobody took the car spot. And then I took it because this was when he was a, a bad boy, right? And I got mm. subwoofers put in it. I like spent a lot that of money. That was pretty sick. Gee, that sounds And yummy. I had these had really nice. two 15s installed. Yeah. And then I brought it back and I put it back in the same spot. And then I was like, I'm here to have lunch with you. And then so I was like, let's take your car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he had like turned on. The, I made sure to like set it so it was really loud, <laughs> you know. It was, like, so, it was funny because like we're eating. That was pretty awesome, babe. We're like eating. And that was our first Valentine's Day. I don't think I've done so a, that. a good Valentine's that. Day <laughs> since then. But um, you know, we're like eating, and then I'm like waiting for the bass to drop. Like, when's it gonna? When's it gonna do it? You know. And then he was like, Oh my god. Yeah, that was great. I think it was Young Jeezy. Probably. Of course it was. Young I Jeezy slapped. I had to pick something <laughs> that slapped. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it, right? Um, I want to thank you guys for turning in, tuning in to another grooming podcast. Follow us on all the things. Um, we're on all the things, so follow us on all of them. Also, send us questions because, uh, you know, we like to answer questions and uh, we like to talk, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so we will see you later. Bye. Bye.